Over the last year, a lot of things have gone into the kernel. Greg actually helped with a study that showed how many lines of code had changed in the kernels. So from each of the panel, I'd like you to name the most innovative feature you think went into the kernel. And to help you, that's actually since 2626 that was released on the 13th of July, 2008. So we'll start with Chris. The most innovative. 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 Most innovative or interesting, what, what do you think is this at standout feature of all the stuff you've seen go into the kernel? Well, since I've been spending most of the last year working on virtualization, I'm clearly going to have a virtualization slant on this. Um, for us, we've been doing a lot of work to improve uh, the way Linux can host virtual machines, Linux as a hypervisor. Uh, so the work that we've done to not just have uh, the low-level infrastructure to be able to drive hardware extensions uh, like Intel's VTX or AMD, AMDV. Uh, we've started integrating more directly into the kernel, so we have these uh, notification schemes called MMU notifiers, which are the beginning of us being able to really take advantage of Linux as a core platform for virtualization, which from my point of view has been the most innovative. Okay, so now make it real for the audience. What is the thing that they will see out of all of this that you think is Excellent. You will see excellent memory management for virtual machines, meaning you can use uh, your hardware in ways that you can't currently use it right now. You can use, load more virtual machines and get better performance out of, out of Linux as a hypervisor. So the takeaway point is that Linux will do virtualization from large devices all the way down to small devices far better than any other operating system in the field. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> John, since you see almost the whole of the kernel, tell us. I see it all and forget it all. <laughs> so we need a memory upgrade for you. We'll arrange that. Guess, uh, <laughs> you know, what, what comes to mind um, for me is the, the addition of the F-Trace framework and the performance counting subsystem that went with it. And the reason this strikes me is not because I'm a huge fan of tracing, even though it's, I mean, it's really very useful to have that degree of, of vision into how your system is working. It's going to help solve a lot of problems. But it's always very interesting to me to watch a situation where people have been beating on a problem for years, and things just seem to, to bog down in the mud and never go anywhere. And then somebody finally approaches a problem from a different direction, and then things take off. F-Trace went into the kernel just as a, a simple function call tracer, just list out functions that are called within the kernel. But it provided the sort of framework and the sort of approach that brought people in to start adding to it. And F-Trace has grown tremendously as a result, and soon it's going to have, I think, things like dynamic tracing features and all that. And it's going to really explode into a set of features that will be useful to anybody trying to get the most out of their Linux systems or figure out why they aren't functioning the way they're supposed to be, because I've heard that happens once or twice. Um, and it's, it's just fun to watch something take off that way when somebody gets the right approach to things. So basically, it's a validation of the open source method, although it took us a long, long time to actually get there. Something like that, yeah. OK. I'll alter the question slightly differently from Greg. I don't want your favorite kernel feature. I want oh. the best thing that came out of staging this oh, year. Oh, man. <laughs> um, can, you, can you favor kernel, fe kernel feature? USB okay. 3.0, Linux now supports it. Brand new technology. Sarah, who's wandering around, did the work. So showing, yeah, back there, great job. Um, showing you Linux supports newest hardware before any other operating system, before you can even buy the stuff. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> um, staging tree, OK, the tree of crap. Yep. Um, <laughs> what, what, what went from crap to cream over the last what year? Crap to, crap to cream. Um, we had two PATA drivers. Uh, went, moved in. We had a few wireless. No, okay, the one thing away. that will allow the audience to lap, you know, it's your, it's your sound bite. Okay, I yes, the one thing. I got Linus's laptop to work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was that driver? It was one of the wireless drivers. I don't remember what, but that, <laughs> okay. that was the justification for the whole thing. <laughs> I'll buy that. Ted. Um, so I just wanted to... Uh, expand on the performance counter aspect of uh, what John was talking about uh, because this has been something where only people who were really, really determined uh, to be able to get access to some of the low-level uh, uh, perf uh, performance <coughs> registers that would be available uh, if they wanted to speed up their CPU-bound application and figure out why was it taking so long. 
Um, there were like about three different kernel patches, none of them mainline, um, fair, all of them fairly esoteric. And now it's very, very easy to say, okay, I only care about this application. Uh, tell me, you know, how many TLB misses I have. Tell me what the cache utilization is for my application and not anything <coughs> else running on the system. Uh, and so that's really, really cool. Uh, it's a really, really cool aspect of uh, performance counters. I think it'll make it a lot easier for people uh, to use that. Um, but th the one feature I think is really, really cool that's finally made it in is kernel mode switching. Um, because that means that uh, uh, it's now much more reliable uh, to be able to go in and out of graphics mode. It means that the X server no longer has to run as root. What a concept. Um, and uh, it means that, uh, I don't think it's all there yet, but eventually when the system hangs and you're running X, uh, the user might actually get to see a valid kernel message as opposed to having to uh, you know, hook up a serial console and like most new laptops, don't even have serial ports anymore. So. <laughs> so the two sound bites from that are, we can really do fancy graphics well now. And actually, if things start to go wrong with your system, we can get a much better facility for tracing why. Yep. OK, up to you. You're supposed to see everything. You've heard your main lieutenants tell you what is the, their favorite feature. What is yours, other than your laptop actually working? Um, <clears throat> so I'm taking a different tack, which is I have actually not been using a lot of the new features. Yes, my laptop works. <laughs> yes, I actually really like the new profiling code because it's just easier to use than OProfile was. But uh, for me, the biggest issue, which I already talked to you about with some people earlier today, is how much easier my job has been getting in the last few months. And that's all I care about. I want to sit <laughs> yeah. there and drink my foofy drink and just press a button and it all merges everybody else's code. And, and that's the one feature that is not visible to user land, but it's the one feature that is most important to me is how the development model actually seems to be working and it's working better than it did even just six months ago and certainly a year ago where uh, I beat up a lot of people over how they did things because it made it more difficult for me. And it took a while, but they seem to have all gotten it and gotten the whole, okay, make it easy for Linus. And, uh, and when you make it easy for me to merge things, it means your code gets in and it's not a single feature that helps some particular load. It's more of a whole development model thing where in the end, it improves, hopefully, the kernel in every area. And that's been, that's really, I mean, I've been so happy for the last two release, pro, uh, release uh, merge windows, counting this one, uh, that it's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs> there are some areas where I'm still nervous, like the Send people. They, they're going to have a hard time merging into the kernel because they don't match up with everybody else yet in this area. But on the whole, we're doing really well. Isn't that because you told well. them their merge tree was crap the last time they presented it? <laughs> I don't know if it's because their tree is crap or because their, their problem is really hard to solve without stepping on everybody else's toes. I mean, it might be, it, I'm not really blaming the developers necessarily. It might be then, it might be the problem space. Something makes certain trees much harder to merge than others. So the bottom line is that you're very pleased with all of us for making your job easier. Yes, yes. <laughs> there is a slight corollary to this that I suppose I should draw to your attention because it has been evident in certain kernel circles that the level of boredom coming out of Penguin Castle in Portland is rising slightly. So the number of threads you've actually been replying to instead of being bogged down under kernel merge work has been increasing in the last year. And I actually, so I really enjoy that. I noticed that I sometimes fix bugs too. I don't, yes, I don't spend that, all my time just hating people for sending me <laughs> merge requests that are, are hard to merge. Um, I actually like having a really easy merge. And for me, it's not the technical git pull part that is really easy. For me, it's I need to also get this happy feeling inside that I know what I'm merging, right? And uh, whether it works or not, 
different issue. But I, <laughs> that, that's more of a, I need to be able to rely on, a, on the person in question to fix up his problems afterwards. But I need, to, I need to get a feeling that, okay, I know what I'm working, merging, I know that I'm merging something that people actually want to have. I want to have all the explanations about what it's doing. I need to get that happy feeling. And now that I mostly have it, it means that I actually get to do some coding again. Not a lot. I mean, this is, I do a couple of commits a week. That's my limit. So the bottom line is if you're a maintainer, you want to merge your code, you do your paperwork, and Linus is happy. Yeah.